Hello everyone. Welcome to Nasso Academy. In the previous lecture we understood the comma operator in C++. Now we are in this lecture and the name of this lecture is conditional operator. In this lecture we will properly understand the conditional operator in C++. So without any further delay, let's get started and let's see what are the topics. The first topic is the conditional operator First, we will understand the conditional operator. We will understand what it is and what it does. Then we will move to the next topic where we will understand why we need conditional operator. So, these are the topics. Let's start with the first one that is the conditional operator. So, what is the conditional operator? The conditional operator is the only ternary operator available in C++. By ternary, I mean three. This means this operator accepts three operands. It needs a condition and two expressions. The first operand must be the condition and the remaining two must be expressions. We know what an expression is. An expression is something that evaluates down to a value. Condition is also an expression, but it evaluates down to a Boolean value. It gives us either true or false. This must be the first operand and the remaining two must be the expressions. Now, based on the condition, it evaluates one of the expressions. Based on the condition that we provide as the first operand to the conditional operator, any one of the expressions will get evaluated. To understand this point better, let's understand the syntax of the conditional operator first. Here we have this conditional operator. Conditional operator is the combination of question mark and colon. Before question mark, we need to provide the condition. And after question mark, we need to provide expression 1. After colon, we need to provide expression 2. Based on this condition, either expression 1 will get evaluated or expression 2. If the condition turns out to be true, then expression 1 will get evaluated. Otherwise, expression 2 will get evaluated. This means if the condition turns out to be false, then expression 2 will get evaluated. I hope this is clear to you. Now to understand the syntax even better and to implement this behavior, Let's take one example program. Here I have included the iostream header file because in this main function I am using stdc out. Inside this main function I have defined these two variables a and b and I have initialized these two variables with these values 10 and 20. These variables are integer variables. After this we have this line. And in this line, I have defined this variable maximum of type integer. To this variable, I want to assign the result of this expression. This is the conditional expression. I am calling this a conditional expression because here we are using the conditional operator. Before this question mark, I have provided this condition a greater than b. Based on this condition, either A will get evaluated or B will get evaluated. We have this condition A greater than B and we know that value of A is 10 and value of B is 20. So we can replace A by 10 and B by 20 here. Now we have 10 greater than 20. We know that 10 is not greater than 20. Therefore, we will get false here. As we are getting false here, we know expression 2 will get evaluated, which is B. This means we will get 20 here and this value will be assigned to variable maximum. I hope this is clear to you. So eventually from this expression, we are getting value 20. Now we can print this value with the help of stdc out. When we execute this program, we will get the output as 20. I hope this is clear to you. So, with this we have understood how to use the conditional operator in a C++ program. Now, I want you to focus on this specific line. By the way, we can replace this line by if-else statement. 
If you already know C programming language, then you must know if else statement. If you don't know about if else, then also there is no problem. I will explain what if else is by converting this line with if else statement. Let's do this now. We have this line. We can convert this line to this equivalent if else statement like this. Of course, first we need to define the variable maximum. Then we have this if else statement. Here I'm checking this condition. This is the same condition. If A is greater than B, then maximum is equal to A. Otherwise or else maximum is equal to B. This is the simple meaning of if else statement. I hope this is clear to you. If this condition is true, then we know maximum variable will hold value of A. Otherwise or else maximum variable will hold value of B. This is the same functionality we were achieving with the help of the conditional operator as well. Here we are checking this condition. Is A greater than B? So we are checking if A is greater than B, then maximum is equal to A. Otherwise, maximum is equal to B. We are achieving the same functionality with the help of the conditional operator. So, this line or this statement is same as this entire code. Clearly, this is much shorter and cleaner compared to this code. So, if we want a shorter or cleaner version of if-else, we can use the conditional operator. If we want to check condition, and based on the condition, if we want to evaluate an expression, then we can use conditional operator, especially when we want this in a single line. I hope this idea is clear to you. So, with this, we are done with the first topic, that is the conditional operator. Now let's move to the second topic where we will understand why we need conditional operator. I have already mentioned this, that if we want to check a condition and if we want to evaluate an expression based on that condition in the same line, then we can use the conditional operator. But this is not the only reason why we should consider using conditional operator. There is one more reason why we should use conditional operator. Here is the reason I have mentioned. Conditional operator is used mainly when an expression can only be passed at the time of initialization based on some condition. When initialization is the only option and when an expression needs to be passed but the expression must be passed based on the condition, then we use the conditional operator. In this situation, we use the conditional operator. Now, to understand this point better, let's take one example program. Here again, I have included the iostream header file inside this main function. I have defined these variables a and b and I have initialized them with values 10 and 20 respectively. These variables are constant integer variables. This means these variables can only be initialized. We cannot assign values to them later in the code. Also, I have defined this constant integer variable maximum. And I want to initialize this variable with the result of this expression. Again, here we have the conditional expression a greater than b, then question mark a colon b. If this condition turns out to be true, then a will be assigned to maximum. This means the value of a will be assigned to maximum. Otherwise, value of b will be assigned to maximum. So, maximum variable will be initialized to either the value of a or b. We know that A is not greater than B because value of A is 10 and value of B is 20. Therefore, value of B will be provided to the variable maximum. We know that this variable will be initialized to value of B. I have done the initialization. I have not performed the assignment after this line of code. 
This means I have not assigned value to this variable later in the code. This is allowed. Therefore, this initialization is valid. Now here with the help of stdc out, I am trying to display the value of this variable maximum. When we execute this program, we will get the output 20. Because this statement is valid. I have initialized this variable. I have not assigned value later to this variable in this code. But what happens if we replace this conditional expression with if else statement? First of all, we cannot use if else statement here at the time of initialization because here we can only provide a value, a constant value, or an expression. We cannot provide a statement. Because statement does not evaluate to a value. An expression is something that evaluates down to a value. So providing expression here is completely valid. Because initialization is possible with a value. But if else is a statement. A statement is something that does not evaluate to a value. It is the action or the command that we give to the computer. That's it. We do not get value from an if-else statement because it is a statement. I hope this is clear to you. So here at the time of initialization, we cannot replace this conditional expression by if-else. If we use if-else like this, then we will get error from the compiler because here I have not performed the initialization. Although a constant integer variable must be initialized, here I am trying to assign value to this variable later in the code. Now we know that this condition turns out to be false. This means else block will get executed. Maximum equal to b will get executed. But this is not allowed. Because this is the constant integer variable. We cannot assign value to this variable later in the code. Only initialization can be performed. And we just learned that with the help of if else statement, we cannot perform initialization. So that is why we cannot use if else here. I hope this idea is clear to you. And this is the reason why I have mentioned this point here. When initialization is the only option, and when an expression needs to be provided based on the condition, then we use the conditional operator. We cannot use the if-else statement. I hope this idea is clear to you. So this is one situation where we use conditional operator in place of if-else. Also, I would like to mention this, that conditional operator is not the complete replacement of if-else. Conditional operator must be used in those situations when we want to provide the result of simple expressions to a variable. When we have block of code, that is, code with multiple lines, then if else should be used. I hope this idea is clear to you. So, with this, we are done with the second topic also. Now we know why we need conditional operator and where we should use conditional operator. This means we are done with this topic and this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.